in Canada, College and University. I know, I know very well uh, George Hector uh, of Klaus. I don't see him here, I, I expected him to see. The paper uh, title is uh, Full Scale Test and CFD Modeling of a Compartment 5 in an Atrium with Smoke Exhaust. It's a very important problem in high rise buildings. They have at the center atrium, atria, if you call more than one. And the presenter is Mr. A. Rafi Nazari. So we can start in time. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor, for your introduction. Uh, speaker, to inform that I have uh, 15 minutes for the presentation. Sure. and my presentation is about full screen test and uh, safety modeling of a compartment fire in Asia with uh, a smoke exhaust system. Uh, my supervisor was Dr. Uh, George Anderson for this research. Uh, first, uh, we're going to have a brief introduction about the compartment fire uh, in Asia and relevant information. Uh, we will talk about our objective and what was our goal uh, for this research and talk about, uh, talk about the facility. Uh, Coffee University has a big facility in Canada, uh, big fire lab. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, our, the different fire scenarios we consider for this research uh, and talk about the temperature differences during the uh, experiments and compare it with the simulation results and the correlations, uh, talk about the smoke height differences as well as the temp temperature differences, and have a comparison with simulation and correlation as well. Uh, discuss about our results and consider everything, and if we have time, we talk about our future work. Uh, as an introduction, I should mention all the correlations for compartment fires in an HO or uh, all the HO fires are based on the principle that the low mass flow rate is uh, equal to exhaust mass flow rate. Exhaust mass flow rate is uh, pretty much clear. Then we have uh, the volumetric flow rates uh, and times it to air density. Uh, it's going to be exhaust mass flow rate. And mass, uh, and low mass flow rate is uh, defined by this equation for uh, compartment fire in an HO. And QC uh, can be uh, can be defined by the ventilation control fire because uh, when we have compartments and there's an opening, it can be ventilation control fire. But in this research, uh, we use our own uh, HU use rate because Carter University is Carter University fire lab is uh, very qualified to uh, measure the HU use rate by uh, oxygen consumption method and uh, mass flow rate. Uh, so we use our uh, QC because we didn't want to use the kind of sense QC to, uh, to have kind of sense mass, uh, mass flow rate. And uh, just uh, we want it to be close to reality, close to real fire. Uh, a is a modifi uh, I can say open modification factor, just uh, depends on the uh, ventilation area opening area and uh, opening height. Uh, and you see that uh, a small temperature can be uh, calculated by, the, by this equation. But all of these equations are uh, from uh, principle of smoke management by cloth and milky. But it's mentioned that uh, all these equations are based on the assumption concerning entrainment and the adaptability of the general what no model and these equations are not experimentally verified. That's, so that's our uh, objective to verify these equations by some experiments and compare them with some simulation. Therefore, all the parameters such as fuel, ambient conditions like ambient temperatures, and all the assumptions like the position of thermocouple tree, the position of thermocouples, as you can see in the picture, are the same as the experiment because the two uh, different thermocouple trees. Thermocouple tree one, which is closer to the fire, the fire is going to be in the in this room, 
And thermocouple three, uh, thermocouple uh, three number two is a little bit far, uh, farther than the fire. And there is ten thermocouples in uh, in a thermocouple three. The first one is, for example, TC ten, which is just one meter below the ceiling, and uh, TC uh, nineteen is ten meters below the ceiling. And same for thermocouple three two. Uh, Carleton University has a huge fire lab in uh, Almond, Ontario, Canada. Uh, there is two parts. The, uh, the blue part is, uh, sorry, the blue part belongs to uh, NRC, the National Research Council of Canada, and the red part belongs to Carleton University, but those are attached together, we work together, uh, and we use our facilities for different tests. Uh, as you can see, this part is a Parent hall, and this one is a 10 story atrium. And there's a tunnel at the back of parent hall and atrium. And all these uh, facilities are totally attached to the NRC fire lab. These are some real pictures from the uh, Garton University fire lab. Uh, this, the white part, uh, is the Garton, uh, belongs to Garton University. Uh, this one is the parent hall. Uh, this tall building at the back is the atrium, tensory atrium, and this one is a tunnel and fan chamber. You can see this is tunnel, and this picture is from the inside of the tunnel. Uh, these animations are from uh, the fire lab as well. Uh, we consider the room inside the atrium, as you can see. There's two ceilings. The first one is at 25 meters. There is six holes, and the second ceiling is at, I can say, 28 meters. All the smoke goes up uh, and pass through these uh, holes and take the, I can say, fan uh, chamber inlet and comes down here uh, from this opening and goes to the fan chamber and be exhausted uh, to the outside from these three fans. Each fan, uh, I think has, uh, has a power for 44 uh, meter per second. So those are three powerful fans. We consider three different fire scenarios for this research. Uh, this one, the heat release rate by time for the first scenario. Uh, for the first scenario, the average heat release rate is uh, is around three megawatts, and the maximum heat release rate is around, as you can see here, 4 megawatt fire. The burning duration is around 1761, and uh, the ambient temperature is uh, minus 7. It's, uh, I think this, uh, this test was in fall, because uh, the ambient temperature, you can see the ambient temperature is different for different scenarios, uh, because uh, they were in different parts of the year. Uh, and for the second scenario and third scenario, the heat release rate are quite similar to each other, and maximum as well. Uh, if you can see here, this one is the uh, heat release rate by time for the second scenario, and the other one, the last one, is for the third scenario. Uh, these are uh, quite similar for the average of heat release rates uh, in fully developed fire frames. And all of them are pretty close to the real fire. There's ignition part, flash hour, fully developed fire phase, and decay. These are some pictures from uh, the test. These are burners inside the room, and this one is the room when we had the test. And these two pictures are as well uh, from the test from the two different sides of the room. I put a short video here uh, just to see how it was close, the real fire. It's an ignition part, uh, and goes to flash over and fully the block fire phase and decay. Uh, now still is in uh, ignition. <laughs> that guy is our technician, is <laughs> jumping around this. <laughs> but uh, it was really helpful, I appreciate this help uh, for, his, for this test. Uh, it's going to, uh, Flash hour is not it's a silly mission, but uh, as soon as we uh, reach the free level of fire, I stop it because I don't want to waste your time. Now it's uh, pretty close to uh, 
Flash over. Yeah, now it's flash over and uh, it's a little no fire phase as you can see. We just control the heat release rate to uh, follow the real uh, heat release rate, the real fire. Uh, mm -hmm. So for temperatures, as I uh, mentioned, we consider two different um, copper trees in two different positions. One of them was closer to the fire, one of them was a little bit farther. Uh, the thermal copper tree uh, TC10 is one meter below the ceiling, and thermal copper 19 is at uh, 10 meters below the ceiling, and the same for thermal copper tree 2. So we had thermal coppers every meter. These are the results from the experiment and simulation. Uh, you can see uh, it starts from ignition, goes to flash over, and it's uh, pretty much follow the real fire. And it's the same thing for uh, simulation as well. But uh, here, this one for thermocopy tree number one, and the average temperature during the fully low fire phase is a little bit more than uh, thermocouple tree 2 because uh, this one was, as I mentioned, uh, closer to the fire and the effect of radiation is pretty much clear here just for uh, 1 uh, degree Celsius. And here as well you can see this one, the average temperature during this part is uh, 1 degree Celsius uh, less than this one. And the other thing uh, is so interesting here is that during the fully developed fire phase, the average temperature is around 15 for uh, thermocouple tree 1 and 14, I can say, for thermocouple tree 2, but it's far from the average temperature from the simulation. Simulation predicts, uh, I can say, 2 degrees Celsius or uh, 3 or 2 degrees Celsius for uh, average temperature during the fully developed fire phase. Uh, and if, I, if you want to compare them, with the correlation uh, results, I put I use those correlation I showed in, uh, in the third uh, slide. I just put the heat release rate there and put them in the spreadsheet and uh, calculated the uh, temperature for every second under all this graph. So the average temperature here is around 15, which is so close to the experimental result, but it's a still far from the uh, simulation. So we can say uh, the correlation is. Uh, pretty much similar to the experiment, but simulation is underpredicted for temperatures. For a smoke height, this one is from uh, safety <coughs> modeling. Uh, I forgot to say we use FTS5 for uh, simulation. And the other one is uh, the smoke layer uh, depth from the correlation. As a result of uh, experiment, the smoke depth was uh, around, uh, I can say, uh, 19 uh, meter from the floor. So it is pretty much similar to the correlation. So six meters. I just uh, made a reference from 25 meters, the first ceiling. So you can see uh, the average, uh, the average of uh, smoke depth during the fully developed fire phase is around uh, 19 or 18, which is so close to experimental result. I didn't put any pictures from the smoke because it was so dark and we couldn't see anything. But we watched out the smoke uh, layer, uh, I can say variation, and it was uh, during this part it was around 18. But for uh, here, for safety modeling, uh, the smoke interface depth was around uh, 14 or 13 meters from the floor. So it's, I can say, 11 meters from the ceiling, but it's still uh, far from the correlation and experimental results. If we take a look at the temperature profile, we can see uh, here there's lots of fluctuation uh, in for the rock fireplace, uh, which it means there was lots of, uh, I can say, turbulence or smoke, uh, but CFT modeling was Pretty, pretty much 
similar for a very much good I can say to uh, estimate the turbulence. I just wanted to show two pictures from the CFD modeling and you can see uh, here for this part uh, the smoke is uh, at I can say 10 meters above the floor but here it's 15 meters for example above the floor. This uh, graph is kind of average uh, from all parts of the uh, HO. We consider uh, 11 uh, different measure, 11 uh, different measuring devices for uh, safety modeling and this one is the average for all parts of the HO. And here in this picture we can see all, how the smoke goes up, the tunnel inlet uh, goes to the tunnel and it be adjusted to the outside. I made a short video from the uh, smoke view. Maybe it's, it's interesting how the smoke works in, uh, or how the smoke moves in, in the HO during the fire, but the temperature is kind of slow and it's not, cannot show it properly. But anyways, uh, so if you want to uh, have a brief discussion about the result, uh, I can say, as you can see here, for average temperature, the average temperature for simulation was around, for the first scenario, was around 2.5 uh, degrees Celsius, and for correlation and experiment, it was around 15 degrees Celsius, uh, or 14.5 degrees Celsius, which is so close to the water still far from the simulation. That's the same thing for uh, second scenario, is 6.5 and 18.5, so these two are pretty much similar, but it's still far from this one. And for the third scenario, uh, you can see the same thing, 33, 32, but it's uh, 23 degrees Celsius. These temperature differences because, uh, is um, because of the ambient temperature differences, if you remember. There was three different ambient temperature, different ambient temperature for these four scenarios. For maximum temperature, you can see uh, the minimum, uh, the maximum temperature from the experiment was recorded in uh, thermocouple 14, which is 5 meters below the ceiling. But here, the maximum temperature from the simulation is recorded by 12 or 10. 12 is 3 meters below the ceiling, and 10 is the toughest, I can say, thermocouple in the thermocouple 3 one. So I can say the uh, simulation uh, predicts uh, the maximum temperature. Uh, in the right place. And for average the smoke depth, as I mentioned, the average smoke depth for the experiment was around uh, something around uh, 18, 19 uh, meters above the flow. So it's pretty much similar to the correlation results, but it's still far from the average smoke layer depth from the simulation, which is 14 uh, for first scenario, and, but it should be 17 or 18 for the correlation. And for the second scenario, it's 13, but it's 19 or uh, 19 as well for the uh, experiment. If I want to conclude our uh, presentation, I can say we consider three different fire scenarios and uh, experimental data compared uh, with simulation results and correlations. Correlation compared well with experiment, but the uh, simulation not. Uh, safety modeling under, I can say safety modeling or simulation uh, under predicted temperature and over predicted the smoke uh, depth. Uh, and that can be because of the high deteriorate rate in the smoke flow, which cools the hot gases and decreases the temperature and uh, increases the depth of hot layer. Or it can be because of the complex nature of uh, fire in the compartment. As a future work, we're going to have some uh, HRO tests uh, with different fires. Uh, we have planned to have 2.5 megawatt fire and 5 megawatt fire in different places, in different, I can say, uh, at the middle of the HRO and corner of the HRO, uh, with different makeup air velocity, uh, which it depends on the, uh, on the exhaust rate, uh, and with different opening positions. These are the references, and thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, I really like to talk about it.
take some questions, one or two questions.